Jacobs and Crockett pose as shady art dealers to find a stolen painting on today's Miami Vice. The Lost Madonna was directed by Chip Chalmers and written by Robert Gotels. Chalmers has been Miami Vice's first assistant director throughout this final season. This is the only episode he directed, and it's also the only Miami Vice episode written by Gotels. This is a pleasantly silly and lighthearted episode that sees the Vice detectives tackling the world of art theft. Here goes. The Vice team stakes out a warehouse where a drug deal is scheduled to go down. The dealers are an ambitious young mobster named Joey Schianti and his right-hand man, Sal. Joey is played by Peter Dobson, who pops up in a lot of places. Because he has the clean-cut good looks of a 50s heartthrob, he tends to play a lot of retro roles. For instance, he was young Elvis Presley in Forrest Gump. Sal is played by Ned Eisenberg, who we've seen playing highly punchable villains in Lombard and Yankee Dollar. Sal and Joey are joined by a lowlife of Crockett's professional acquaintance named Stanley, who's bringing them a top-secret shipment. Sal and Joey take off with half the shipment, and Stanley is supposed to follow right behind with the other half. Crockett stops Stanley, however. He tries to arrest him, but he gets attacked and distracted by a pair of feral cats. Stanley pulls a gun, and Tubbs ends up shooting and killing him. In Stanley's possession, instead of the expected drugs or other contraband, Tubbs and Crockett find a pair of small Renaissance paintings. At headquarters, the vice detectives are joined by a visiting NYPD detective, Jeffrey Whitehead, who is played by Michael Chiklis. Chiklis is famous as the star of The Shield and The Mish, but he will always be near and dear to me for playing The Thing in the gloriously terrible 2005 version of Fantastic Four, a film that's so joyously half-assed that I had no choice but to see it in a theater three times. Whitehead specializes in art theft, and he's tracking a stolen triptych of priceless works of art by a 15th century Italian artist. The two small paintings found in Stanley's possession and a bas-relief sculpture of the Madonna with Child. He insists on a media blackout about the recovery of the two small paintings, because if Joey knows the police are involved, he'll refuse to sell the Madonna. So Tubbs poses as a Natalie-dressed art history professor and visits a gallery run by Joey's sister Julia, who is played by Elizabeth Barrage, best known for playing Costanza Mozart in Amadeus. Tubbs grabs Julia's interest by offering to sell her a hotly coveted stolen painting. They agree to meet in a hotel to seal the deal. So Tubbs and Crockett sell the painting to Joey and Sal for a great deal of cash. Because of the media blackout, Joey and Sal don't know the two small paintings are in the custody of the police. They suspect Crockett and Tubbs were in league with Stanley to steal them. Later, Crockett, Tubbs, Sal, Joey, and Julia attend an art auction at which the auctioneer, who is in cahoots with Joey, sells the painting to Joey and Sal to ensure an outwardly legitimate line of ownership. Julia throws a swanky garden party Party, at which Crockett and Tubbs mingle with the upper crust of Miami's art scene while Crockett and Julia flirt. Twist in My Sobriety by British singer-songwriter Tanita Takaram plays, which works fabulously. It's a very sultry and sophisticated song that sets exactly the right mood. At the party, Tubbs and Crockett eavesdrop on a conversation between Joey and a wealthy Greek buyer to whom Joey has promised to sell the triptych. Joey hasn't yet told him the two paintings are missing, and the buyer suspects he's being given the runaround. Tubbs and Crockett let Joey know they've lined up their own buyer for the Madonna. Later, Joey and Sal burst into the home Tubbs is using as part of his cover as a shady art history professor and accuse him of working with Stanley to steal the two small paintings. They're ready to kill him, but luckily the media blackout ends and Joey happens to catch a fortuitously timed news report about how the police have recovered the small paintings. Reassured that Tubbs and Crockett are legitimate, Joey agrees to sell the Madonna to their buyer. Whitehead admits the NYPD can't come up with enough buy money to cover the extravagant cost of the Madonna, but Crockett gives the bright idea to cover the rest of the purchase price in Vice's stash of confiscated heroin. Julia is repulsed at the thought of trading a great work of art for heroin, but Joey and Sal, who are a pair of ridiculous knuckleheads, think this is a great idea, so a deal is made. Joey and Sal bring the Madonna to a lavish estate where Whitehead is posing as the buyer. Whitehead knocks Joey out, steals the Madonna, and makes a run for it. Crockett and Tubbs arrest Sal, but Joey heads off in hot pursuit of Whitehead. Crockett and Tubbs trail Whitehead and Joey to the port of Miami, where a disguised Whitehead is getting ready to board a cruise ship to Paris with a stolen Madonna. When Joey tries to stop him, Whitehead shoots and kills him, to the strains of She's Waiting by Eric Clapton. Crockett tackles Whitehead before he can board his ship, and in the melee, the Madonna breaks into pieces. Only the Madonna turns out to be a fake. Crockett shows up at Julia's place, where she's getting drunk and canoodling with a bohemian artist while admiring the real Madonna. Crockett smugly tells her he knew she would never be able to trade great art for heroin. Julia tries alternately to bribe him, seduce him, and stab him with a fruit knife, but Crockett cheerfully arrests her. This is an utterly charming 
episode. Art theft, of course, does not fall into Vice's domain, but this episode does a decent job of making it plausible that Vice would be working on this case thanks to the drug angle. Overall, the plot is convoluted, but solid. Really, this one is all about the guest stars. Michael Chiklis, Peter Dobson, Ned Eisenberg, and especially Elizabeth Berridge are all terrific in this. They seem to be richly enjoying themselves. Tubbs and Crockett also seem to be having a good time, and the result is just a lot of fun to watch. It's beautifully filmed, and setting it in Miami's glamorous and high-toned art world automatically adds a great deal of visual interest. I'm giving this one four flamingos. Next time, Crockett and Tubbs infiltrate a group of cop vigilantes. Until then, please feel free to chat with me on Twitter about Miami Vice, and I'll meet you back here later.